Hi everyone, I just want to wish you all a happy new year. It's 2023. I know it's crazy. Last year went very fast. Also, I just wanted to say why I didn't upload in December. If you watched the last video on the channel, which was the Volkswagen Up, towards the end of the video, if you did see it, I did state I've just bought uh, a new rebuild project. That is the easiest car I've ever bought, and it's a Category S. And I did state it probably ain't enough footage for one video, so I'll combine it into the next video of the Audi A3. Things didn't go to plan. So the car got dropped off on Copart. Second day, the body damage got repaired. And then I did say it was having a wet cam belt change. As a uh, wet cam belt is a cam belt that's internal of the engine that's always in oil. I then found out it had a major recall on an engine component. So the car is now at main dealers. Um, just been have emails backwards and forwards to the uh, headquarters UK of that car manufacturer. I'm just waiting for an email I think it will be Tuesday, the 3rd of Jan, confirmation, yep, go ahead to Peterborough, manuf uh, not manufacturers, dealers. But yeah, so I was holding back on this video for the footage for that car, but things didn't go to plan, unfortunately. The Volkswagen app, it's dropped off to the body shop. Uh, they didn't have an appointment, so I've just left it with them. And also, December is, well, I, know, I understand December's a busy month for everybody, but uh, it's a very busy and wonderful month for me and my missus as both our sons are born in December. 23rd December is my eldest son's birthday. New Year's Eve yesterday is my youngest son who's two. Also, if you're thinking why am I finishing the Audi A3 at home, it's because I started renting two space in the unit. I think it was November time. The Audi A3 was already here at home. I think since what? I can't, it's been here a while, it's already painted. So that's why I'm finishing the car here because I I did have two cars at the unit. Also, this video, what I've uploaded today, this has been filmed for a long time, even before doing the suspension on the Audi A3. So my plan was November, December, was to finish it, do all the front. The front's not built up. Obviously, the wing and bonnets on, the bumper and headlights need to go on, which will be the next video, the final video. But yeah, uh, November, December, it was just continuously raining in, in the UK. Obviously, I did catch COVID at the beginning of December, but apart from that, it was just raining every day and freezing outside, <laughs> minus four, minus five. So I, didn't, I don't just want to give excuses why I haven't done it. I'd just rather be honest with you guys because my New Year's re resolution for the channel this year is to post more frequent, uh, more frequent videos. That is the whole point of having the unit because I can go in there any time, any weather, but yeah, two cars at a time. One car, I'll be, be straight on the channel, rebuilding it. When that goes to the body shop, then I can upload the second car, reveal video, etc. That is the plan this year, my New Year's re resolution, and I honestly mean it. I am seriously gonna try my best. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing the interior on the Audi A3. And one thing I did forget to mention on the reveal video, this car did have a broken accelerator pedal. So when my recovery guy picked up the car, he actually sent me a photo. I've already unbolted it. It's just one T30 torque screw that holds it on. As you can see, the accelerator pedal was broke. Don't know how, I don't know if whoever was driving braced themselves. They might have seen the accident was gonna happen. I have not got a clue. But I managed to get a replacement. Literally another bargain, 10 pounds. This is second hand, but it's an original item. So I'm gonna get that in first. I don't have a good camera angle under here to film me fitting it, but I just thought I'd show you. You've got one plug, the accelerator pedal fits in this area and the one screw goes through here. So the car's running, the pedal's now fully installed. As you can see, it's all working. So the job I wanna do next, I wanna get this seat out because this is the seat with the airbag blown because that needs replacing then the seam re-stitching up. After that, we'll get the headliner out, so then we can take out the curtain airbags and the two front seat belts. So just before I disconnect the battery, as I am working with airbags, and as you know, they all haven't deployed, so what I wanted to do before I disconnect the battery is just run a diagnostics check to see what fault codes we have before we start re replacing the airbags and the seat belts. So I'm gonna do a full system check
So the fault codes we have, obviously like you know, I have just replaced the accelerator pedal. So that will be the fault codes for that. Data bus error, that will be when I've disconnected it. Electrics will be the, obviously the driver's headlight is still smashed. So that will be for that. Airbags. Driver's igniter. Driver's seatbelt tensioner. Front belt front passenger seatbelt tensioner, driver's head curtain, passenger head curtain, pedestrian protection crash sensor. So basically on these you've not just got a crash sensor either corner of the front, you've also got a pedestrian one which is a sensor either corner with like a silicon pipe that joins them both together. That one has gone on this one as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to disconnect the battery. Even if I try and clear these fault codes, they're not going to clear until we've replaced the blown airbags and seats. So the only fault codes we've got left is in two modules, which is for the electrics, which are, like we know is the driver's headlight and the all the airbags. So now we know what fault codes we've got. I can now disconnect the battery and we can start cracking on. Nice easy job. You just got two 10mm nuts on either terminal. So then I'm just going to take the terminals off, leave it for about 15 20 minutes just so the electric discharges from all the systems. Also, on the negative terminal, this is a pyrotechnics fuse. Majority of the times, these normally blow when the airbags deploy, which means then you can't start the vehicle up. So if you're buying a salvage car on Copa or any other salvage auction, car, the airbags are deployed and the car's a non-runner. There is a high possibility is that not unless the engine's been hit, for example. So just move the terminal out the way. This one can come off. I'll just sit on top. So this front driver's seat's held in by four M10 multi-spine bolts. Obviously two on the front either side and two on the back. Luckily this isn't an electric seat so I can move it back to get to the front and then move it forward to get to the rear bolts. So I'm just going to get it on the tripod now. Sorry if it's not the best camera angle. Hopefully once I get this seat out I'll be able to get a good camera angle for when we're doing the uh, headliner. That's the plan anyway. So fingers crossed. They're not very long bolts. All right, these are the last two. Now that seat should be loose, as you can see. So now we've got all the bolts out. I've slid this back a little bit so we can just tilt it up. Oh, look at that. A one pound coin. That's going in the pocket. So then you'll see the wires here. That wire is from the seatbelt buckle. And you have the airbag wire. There's just one trim clip to remove. So then we can lift this carpet up to unplug the wiring plugs. So I'm just gonna do that now. So once you've got that plastic insert taken out the middle of the clip that will just come out it's like a fir tree on the end that carpet will lift up the underlay and here's the two wires we need to undo so just before i start taking off the headliner i do want to just unbolt the lower bolt on this passenger seat belt as this one is locked up. So once you remove this little black cover, that then exposes the bolt. On this one, it's an M12 multi-spline. So it is bigger than the seat bolts as they're an so M10. So I'm now gonna take the covers off for the B post. These are just clipped on. This side of the door, Robert. So just clipped on and it'll pull down. So 
Right, so that's the clips now done. This will just pull out. As I've already undone that bolt, it can just come straight out of that. I have done the driver side quickly off camera. Now I'm just doing the passenger side on camera. Uh, as we know, the lower bolt was an M12. The top bolt here is back to an M10. So I've just got to take this lower plastic. Same again, it's all on plastic clips. Well, metal spring clips. It literally does just pull off. You have to give it a little bit of force, but just be careful as you know, plastic can bend. There we go. That's out that corner. Just got to do the other side. Now that bit's out. So the wiring plug for the seatbelt tensioner. This is how all the airbag plugs are on VAG cars. That little orange piece, you just get a little pick and that pulls out towards you. It doesn't come out fully, just so enough then that plug will pull off. But you do need to be very, I think I've said on the Fabio video and the up video, you do need to be very careful on this orange plug as you can very easily break it. So now that plugs off, we've got an M10 bolt just here that's holding the actual seat belt unit to the car. One M10 bolt just here. This metal clip that pushes up, this needs to come out first, which you just pull these down both sides and this will come off as you can see. I'll do it right now actually. Do it one handed, there we go. So literally just press down on that and the other one and that just pushes up which means then you can get this one out i don't think i'll be able to do this one handed on the camera no but yeah literally you squeeze these in and then that pulls up then undo these two bolts so now the seat belts are off both sides the b post covers I have started doing the driver's side. As you can see, the A-post cover is now off. It's on my leg now. Uh, the grab rails are now removed on the driver's side. So the A-post cover, on these A3s, they do have a speaker towards the bottom, which you need to unplug. And towards the top of the post, it's around this area, you've got a metal spring clip just here. One here, when you turn it around, there is no screws. You see the airbag logo that basically pushes in and spreads that out so it won't remove. But yeah, they, they can be a bit tricky to remove. You just need to be patient and just be careful. So the sun visors, if I just pull that down, if I get a little pick, two seconds, put it under here. That will come off the cover, which is just here. If you see, it's got two, two plastic prongs. One's bigger than the other. They go in these holes and spread this clip out so it doesn't come out. Once you remove this, this will then pull off. And it's the same with this side. So I'll use a plastic pry tool on this one. It's not this piece you need to undo. If I fold this up, it's this corner. It has just a little... That pulls out, which is this piece. Just put that on the dashboard. And then this is loose. Pull it down, and then that just slides out just like that. And that's that mechanism. So I'll put these plastic bits back in the holes so they don't get lost. So how the grab handle comes off, if you can see this plastic bit just here, use one of these so basically you put the flat end in that corner i would like to do this on camera but i don't think i'll be able to this bit just pulls out slight ah, i can if you can see that i've just pulled it out slightly you then do it on this one 
and then the grab handle literally just pulls out, as you can see. So the last thing that's holding up the headliner, I'll need to connect the battery up so I can undo the boot as the rubber along here. Then I need to take out the rear interior light, just get a plastic pry tool. This just comes off. It's just set on metal spring clips with, and then just disconnect the wiring plug. I've already pulled this one down. There is no bolt holding this one on, just metal spring clip again probably have four different plugs on this one so I've now disconnected the front interior lights so here's the unit just here these wires so the yellow green and gray you do not touch these ones it's just these well there's four in the end so there's one if I can see there's one dangling up there two together and this little red one so to the rear one I've already used a pry tool that comes out now as you see these plastic spring clips, there's four to either side, and obviously just this one little red plug. So disconnect that red plug, that will come off, and I think we are then ready to remove the headliner. So I've now connected and disconnected the battery so I could open the tailgate, taken the rubber halfway down, then wash my hands. The only reason I wash my hands, because I am gonna attempt to get the creases out this headline headliner it can be done it's a 50 50 chance only reason i know that as well as my personal a4 i think the first car on this channel curtain airbags went off on this one this is the original headliner that swage line above the grab rail that is the normal normal line but there was creases in this one which they all come out so it's a 50 50 chance you all know by the end of this video if they come out or if I had to get replacement. So once you take that rubber off, the back of the headliner, pretty much same as the front spring clips. So one in each corner, then two in the middle. Headliner's now loose. I'm gonna try and manipulate this out of the car. And there we have it, one headliner fully out. Unfortunately, it has got dark now, but as I've shown you, the seatbelt airbag wiring plug, how to take that off. I'm just gonna show you the curtain airbag. So this one, this orange bit here, pulls to the side. Just that amount, it doesn't come all the way out again like the seatbelts, and that will pull off just like that. But yeah, just be careful on the orange plug again. and. The curtain airbag is secured by one T-Torx 25 screw that goes on the A-post. Then it's got one where the igniter is on the airbag, just here. Undo that, this will then slide that way and come off. Then there is four of these clips. They are a bit of a pain. You gotta get, do one side, put a tool in. So then that will squeeze one side, then do the, it's a bit of a fiddle, I'll be honest. This is why I didn't film it. They always are for me on curtain airbags. I've literally got one left now at the back. The driver's side airbag is now removed. I'll show you on camera. So a T25 Torx, undo this screw. Pull that locating tab out. And then that slides backwards. If you can see that nut, that just locates in that hole, you see? So that is now, both curtain airbags now removed. This will be a split second for yourselves, but since I removed the curtain airbags, it was getting dark that night. Uh, since I removed them, the car has been to the body shop and it's back, and I'll just show you now. Now the car's back from the body shop, I also have the seat belts and the curtain airbags from the airbag team, and the driver's seat has now been repaired. So the first thing I want to do now is fit the curtain airbags and then we'll get onto the seatbelts.
So now I've got those airbags in, I'm gonna get the headliner in now. I'm gonna obviously wash my hands first as it is a very light color headliner. But my missus is gonna be very happy as I have had it in the house for quite a while now. I did try fit into my A4 estate, but the boot on them, they're not very wide. So it was just gonna crease it up even more. But a good thing having it in the house with the heating on, the creases have come out. So that is one good thing. So I'm gonna go get that now. Have a look at this guys no creases in the headliner now brilliant news so i have just placed this on off camera uh you would have seen me push put it into the car and then the rest i did off camera quickly so as you will see when i removed the headliner there isn't much that holds these into the car so i've just installed all four grab handles and the front sun visors i did the passenger a post and the rear light so all i need to do now i'll do this on camera is the front center light and the driver's side a post once we've done them that headliner is then finished and we can get this get the seat belts on i'm now going to install the a post trim for the driver's side just remember we do have a speaker on the bottom of that post so what you want to do first you want to get the there is a channel here on the dashboard you want to get the a post in this area first this part of the trim will go into that channel once that's in get out the car and you'll be able to look from the top here on the window screen for the uh, wire for the speaker because this wire is not long enough to plug into that speaker without that being in the channel I'll, I'll show you in a second i'll uh, cut back in when i'm doing it so once you've got the a post trim installed into that channel come out the car like i showed you a second ago and you'll see the speaker just here and the cable above it you can get two fingers through underneath to get that plugged in I won't be able to do it on camera as I'm holding my phone while filming. Uh, so once that's installed, the three prongs on the A-post trim, if you look down at an angle, you'll be able to see where they go. That will save damaging these plugs if you're not too sure where the holes are. So I'm just gonna quickly get that installed now. Once the A-post is all clipped into place, that airbag logo, which is a plastic clip, that just pushes into the retaining clip and then just get the door rubber just feed that around the A-post trim and the headliner. Then that's all installed. So I'm gonna get on to fitting the center light now. So once you've got all the wires plugged in, there's two plastic prongs towards the rear of the car. They need to go in first. And then this will literally clip into place. Just like that. I can't show you it working as the battery's disconnected. But now everything on the headliner is now installed. We'll get on to fit in the seat. Belt. I've just come to the driver's side, so I noticed this corner wasn't fully pushed in. So I just need one more push so it was fully clipped in. That's now finished. Excuse the boxes in the car. This part of the video I am filming now, the 1st of January 2023. But it's brilliant news. I'll show you the driver's side in a second as well. It's brilliant news that there is no creases now in the headliner. I got quite lucky on that one, I do admit. So that's the driver's side. As you can see, no creases. So that's that headliner is now spot on. I'm really chuffed with that. So now onto the seat belts. I'll start with the driver's side. And as, as I previously stated, I have had these professionally repaired at the airbag team. Also, the bolt that holds the seat belt to the car body, Audi state you have to replace, and it's 40 newton meters is the torque spec. There is no degrees, it's just 40 newton meters. So pretty easy to do. As you see, this little hook you'll put it in at an angle as so, then you'll tilt it and it will lock into place into this hook just here. Then you can put the bolt in and 40 Newton meters, which I'll do just. So I've got the uh, torque wrench set up for 40 Newton meters. It's an M10 multi-spline and I've got the new bolt. So I'm just gonna get that installed now. As you can hear, that's now torqued to space. So the bolt's torqued up to 40 newton meters. The airbag plug's plugged in. Now that metal retaining clip is now around the seat belt. That goes into this location. I'll see if I can do it on camera, one-handed. Just like that, that's locked in. Once that's in, where's the plastic? This one just here it needs to clip in now to the body.
and that just pulls down. That's now locked. And now I need to put this trim around the seat. So as you just see, the middle part's all clipped in now. I have just installed a new bolt for the top part of the seat belt. Same again, 40 Newton meters. That's all torqued up. Now we can get this trim on. Once that trim's on, we can then put the lower bolt in to the bottom and then get the uh, plastic side trims. And then we can, I'll do the same on the passenger side. I'll do that off camera and get the driver's seat installed. Daylight is pretty much going now. Uh, the only reason I'm not finishing this one at the unit, as I was doing this car before, I was renting spaces at the unit, and I've already got cars there. So, and as well, just for the time lapse, I did state you had to put this one on first. No, I. To be honest, it's been quite a while since I stripped this one. I didn't go back onto the uh, videos, but yeah, this one needs to go on first. Then this one goes on because this one goes over the black black trim. Once them two are on, you can then put the lower bolt in. Same again, 40 newton meters. Now all that's done, I can get the driver's seat in. So I've done the passenger side seat belt and the trims off camera quickly. So that's both seat belts now installed. Now I'm on to the last part of the interior on the Audi A3, which is to fit the driver's front seat. So I've had it repaired. I'll post a little clip now of when I dropped it off. Uh, it's the first time using this company I took it to. It's uh, called Evans Upholstery. They're in Whittlesea in Cambridgeshire. So father and son business, really nice people. I didn't get the son's name, but the father's name was Ivor. So I'll post a little clip now, and Ivor took a few photos for me, which I'll include on the video. So I've just come to Evans Upholstery. I've not used this person before. Here's the seat out the A3. Here's the replacement airbag, which I took out the seats I paid £10. Yeah, so that's the driver's seat now fully repaired. And yet again, Evans upholstery, amazing work. I'm really chuffed. So that's gonna be my new go-to place for seat repairs, etc. interior trims. But yeah, I'm really happy. Great work, as you know, the airbag did deploy on this side, which will replace the airbag, and I was professionally stitched the side up. So I've got the carpet, this part of the carpet already, the clip, I've just removed that. That exposes the two uh, connections. So I'm gonna quickly get the seat in now. Same again, the bolts are 40 newton meters. Audis don't, um, you don't have to replace these ones, it says in the owner's workshop manual. And by the way, when I stated about the seatbelt bolts you need to replace, Audi state if the airbags have gone off. So if you're just removing the seatbelts, I don't know, to do something like change the color of the seatbelts, you wouldn't have to change the bolt. So I've got the seat in now. I haven't bolted it down. I've pushed it all the way back and just linked it backwards. Just so I could put the wires in from the seat into the car harness. Uh, you can't get them mixed up. Yellow plug is with a yellow plug for the car harness. And a black plug is for the black plug on the car harness. The yellow one you need to push on. Then it does have a lock, locking mechanism which you just push down. And that cable's got a plastic clip that just goes into the body. Once that's all on, put the carpet down and then you'll have the plastic trim clip that just pushes in here. And then you can put the bolts in for the seat and they're just torqued up to 40 newton meters. So I'm gonna quickly do that now. So all the bolts are now done and they're all torqued up to 40 newton meters as I'll just demonstrate. So the last job I want to do on the A3, I just want to connect the battery up and then we'll just uh, run diagnostics on the car. So the battery is now connected and the diagnostics is now plugged into the car. As you can see, it's blue, which means it's connected. Uh, so I've just gone into the airbag module. I'm just going to clear the fault codes. Personally, I think we're going to have two fault codes left, uh, which would be the crash sensor and the 
I can't think of the name now. Pedestrian sensor. Uh, if you remember, we had two broken wires. So these are genuine plugs from TPS Audi. I'm gonna go ahead now and press clear for the fault codes. Click yes. Yes again. I'm just gonna key cycle it. Go back. Read DTC. So here's the fault codes we have left. It's not the curtain airbags, it's not the seat belts or the driver's seat. I did think I had, t it was gonna be two, but no, I forgot that. Um, you've got two pedestrian crash sensors and you've got two crash sensors in the front bumper. So as I've just shown you, I've got repair wires I need to do. Uh, this is the pedestrian crash sensor. It's a brand new one from TPS. That's the part number, bear me a second, sorry. If you need to know, that one there, 8VO959109 E for Echo. So that goes into this foam, if you can see the channel just here, and this foam clips onto the front crash bar. So that's those two, and the remaining two um, is the crash sensors that are in either corner of the front bumper. So the, the final video, I'll be repairing those wires, installing this one with the foam onto the crash bar. When I install the bumper, obviously I'll plug in the crash sensors and then we'll have no more fault codes for the airbags. So the next video on the Audi A3 is going to be the final video. Um, as you, I stated at the beginning of the video, the car is painted. You can see it's still on the Space Saver wheel, but I have had a brand new, well, you can see it's brand new. Uh, I've had a brand new tyre fitted to the driver's front wheel as that tyre did come off the bead. I ain't going to risk trying to pop the bead back on in case there is damage to that bead. Um, and I do not fit part worn tyres. So I've got replacement. The rest of the car is on Avon ZV7s. So that's what I've bought, a brand new tyre. Um, so I've got to put the headlights in, put that wheel on, bumper, arch liners, um, wet wrap the seats. Obviously the repair was done, but there's a couple of stains on the driver's seat. I'll just do the whole interior. And obviously just serves in the car, a full service, MOT, tracking, and a couple of other little bits. But yeah, that will be the final video on the Audi A3, the next video. And hopefully, as you know, I am filming this part today, the 1st of January. The weather should hopefully, the next week or two, hopefully no rain, I can get this car finished because I could film this because I work in between my missus hours and I work nights, my missus work days, two kids, I work in between all that. Um, and like you know, this car's at home, so it's not in the unit. It gets dark at like four o'clock at the minute. So that's where I'm struggling with time. When we both have a day off and I can do the cars, it's, it's raining, which see, I could film the car in the evenings when it's not raining with a head torch on, but I can't film. I could have the car done tonight and then tomorrow do the uh, MOT, et cetera. But I need to film. So after this car, there won't be any more cars filmed at my house. There'll be two cars at the unit. But yeah, I appreciate everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing as I can't wait to get some really nice builds on the channel this year. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it will be in January and very soon. Thanks again and yet again, a happy new year to you all. So hopefully the weather will stay good this week, next week, and I can get this car finished. I just need, you know, a good day with nice weather. Uh, I'm not gonna film today as I need to finish editing. This is what, half two now, PM. I need to get this video edited and I need to do roast dinner for the family. But yeah, I appreciate you watching. And if it's not this car next, hopefully the, uh, Oh, I nearly said what car it so, is. So yeah, it will either be the Audi A3 next on the channel, or the Volkswagen app will be back from the body shop. We'll have that one on the channel first, or the new rebuild project. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, honestly, guys, have a great new year.